Let's pray for a minute here. Lord, I ask your blessing on uh, on this time together, and as your uh, word is spoken and we receive it, I ask that you make it penetrate our hearts and our lives and to take it seriously. We thank you so much for your word and for, for your son Jesus who gave us this church. Help us to be faithful, Jesus. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. So we're going to uh, go right into our message today. We're not going to have a song to break it up. I know that's unusual for you. So, but we're changing things up a little bit. Sometimes it will be. Sometimes it won't. We want to make worship worshipful. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Are you with me still? Yes. You heard me talking to the children about um, there's places and locations and buildings that we. Um, we all eventually have to go to in life. But we have a PowerPoint up here. Hey, that looks like it. Let's stop right there. Um, there's some places that we have to go to in life. And I'm not talking about Disney, Disney World or some of those places that we want to visit. I'm talking about places that we need to go just because of the course of life. Um, like school, for example, or the dentist's office, like I asked the children. There's this necessary places that uh, invoke a variety of responses inside us when we hear about them or when we think about them. We feel different about going to the mall, for instance, as opposed to going to the dentist. So let's talk about a few, okay? Um, I'm going to put up a couple images. I'm going to have some images here on the screen. And I want you to say the first word that comes to mind about how people typically feel in regard to these locations, okay? So give me one word. Here's the first image is the DMV. What's the word? Huh? Um, here's the next one. Doctor's office. Give me one word. Waiting. Huh? Anxiety. Here's another one. Grocery store. How do you feel? What's the word? Huh? Oh. All right. Well, we. Um, those aren't the most rave reviews that I just heard, by the way, right? Some are worse than others, but in all three of them, <clears throat> you can see that in most cases, um, we go to these places because we have to, not necessarily because we want to. And uh, listen, just listen to the list of those words that we said, huh? You know what's funny? I didn't hear anybody say, love it, did they? Huh? Did you hear anybody say that? I wonder what people would say if I put a picture of the church on the screen. Now don't say anything out loud for that one, but just think for a minute, honestly, okay? Do we think about the church the same way we think about the DMV, the doctor's office, or the grocery store? Is this just the place that we feel we have to go? Or is there more to it? Think about the people who aren't here with us today. Or maybe the people who haven't stepped into a church for a long time. Or maybe ever. I'd be willing to guess that some of them would describe coming to church like we think about going to the DMV. And you know, based on their experiences, they probably wouldn't be far from the truth. Is that what God intended when he created the church? Was it his idea for it to be that way for his community of his people? I believe the Bible says no. That wasn't, nor is it, God's plan for the church. We have a great church. We have great ministries in place. We have caring people who love the Lord, or at least want to, 
We have several great ministries. We have a small group ministry set up. We have youth ministry, children's ministry, choir. We're working on building up worship and getting things better so that we can glorify God. We have a tremendous opportunity right here in front of us, and we've had it for a long time. And all we need is for you to fall in love with your church. I believe that God wants us to love this church. Not love that we see in the news sometimes and that kind of talk about um, that or maybe that we've experienced in the past, but love the church as God intended it to be. Not all the negativity and things you hear. Love the church as God meant for it to be. That's what this series is going to be about. That we learn to be the community of people that God created us to be. Now before we jump into it, um, let's pray this again for a minute. God, I just want to add another prayer here. Just ask us to really open our hearts and minds to listen to your word today. I pray that your Holy Spirit will cover us, invade us, and move us beyond our, beyond our imaginations. And we will see and witness amazing things in this church. I just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn to John 13, please. And somebody read verse 34 and 35. In fact, read it together. John 13, verse 34 and 35. Let's read it together. Um, you got it? Yeah. Is it up there behind me? Then you got it. Let's read it in this version that's on there. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That verse is a prelude when it was written of the church to come. The church actually starts in the book of Acts but here we find Jesus meeting with his disciples, telling his followers how they should be known, what their reputation will be in the community. He is creating this new community, and he's going to tell them right there how they're to live in this community. They will be a people who are known for their love for one another. Church people are meant to love one another. That's the next slide. It's not optional. It's not an elective. It is a command of Jesus. Do you get that? He says, you must love one another. We are to love one another. But what does that mean? What does it mean to love one another? When we say we want to love the church as God intended it, and, and as, as he intended us to be, what do we mean by love? You know, while I was back in New York visiting family in August, I contacted an old friend from high school, Mike Roberts. He and I were best buddies and had a blast together. And um, we went out to lunch at a place that he suggested, a little restaurant. And it wasn't little, it was nice. It was called the Burger Barn. Now, I'm not a big burger guy, but I had the most amazing burger compared to anywhere I've ever been. And I told Mike afterward about how great the service was and how the overall experience was just phenomenal. And I said, I think that's going to be one of my new favorite places when I come to Catskill. I loved it. I loved a restaurant. You know, when my son was a child, he just was crazy about the Civil War. He could name every battle and every general, and he used to amaze me by telling me the details when he's about seven, eight years old of it. So on his eighth birthday, I took him to Gettysburg for a three-day weekend. We visited all the battlefields and the museums, and he was able to run through the field and, and reenact Pickett's Charge where General Pickett and his troops had marched 130 years earlier. And we stayed in a hotel right next to the battlefields. 
We had a great time laughing and playing and reenacting history, just being together. Tucking him into bed that night, I asked him if he had a good birthday. He said, I did. It was super fun, especially Pickett's Charge, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you too, buddy. I love my son. So what do we mean when we say, I love my church? What does it mean to love one another? Does God want us to want love one another like I love my restaurant experience? Or does God want me to love the church like I do my son? With the restaurant, I was experiencing something given to me. A place, an offering of something. The restaurant fed me and provided a moment in which I could participate. If the experience itself was excellent, I could rate it. I could give it a positive yes on Yelp and recommend it to others. But if it was a bad experience in a restaurant, I could return and say, I wouldn't go back there. I'm just going to avoid it. But with my son, I was experiencing an important relationship. My son is someone that I am intrinsically connected to. My love for him isn't based on what I'm receiving or what I'm experiencing, but it's based on who he is and what is involved in our relationship. Because I love him, I care for him. I play with him. We go through life together. That journey might bring about some not so great experiences, but we work through those. I don't yelp rate my son. I love him. The church was never meant to be like a restaurant. It's meant to be based on relationships. And that begins first and foremost in a relationship with Jesus. And through that, we are connected to one another. Jesus loves us and brought us into a relationship with himself. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us so that we could have eternal life and be reconnected with God the Father. His death on the cross was an act of love for us. Earlier in John, we're told it was because God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us that we might have real life. He intentionally loved us. He served us. In being brought into that relationship, we aren't only brought, being brought into a relationship with Jesus, but also that brings us into a relationship with one another with one another. Being in a relationship with Jesus means being part of the church, part of his kingdom, part of the family of faith. Many people, too many people, treat the church like a restaurant. If the experience isn't just to their liking, they'll find somewhere else to go. Or they'll stay home and not go at all. This is beyond unfortunate. It sets up expectations for the church that it was never intended to fulfill. And it also, we have to be honest here, that isn't relationship focus. That is self-focus. That isn't loving Jesus. That love is as I see fit, as I'm comfortable with, and for my own gain. The church is not supposed to be like that. The problem is, it's becoming like that. It's not uncommon to hear people criticize the church, especially Christians. It doesn't make any sense. We all know the church isn't perfect, including this church. But let's not forget, okay, that in spite of her faults, the church is precious to God Almighty. The church is God's inheritance. The power of Christ exists for the benefit of the church. In Ephesians, Paul tells us that the church is the body of Christ, 
the bride of Christ. And that Christ died for his church. So that being so, what right do we have to be critical? Clearly God thinks more of the church than the church thinks of itself. And this needs to change. It needs to change. Just as each of us individually need to recognize our identity in Christ, the church need to rec needs to recognize her identity in Christ. We need to know who we are, and we need to know who the church is. You will experience the love of the church when you intentionally love the church. You will have a deep sense of love for the church when you actively and intentionally practice love for the church. The opposite is also true. When you don't intentionally love the church, you're not going to experience the love for the church. We'll love the church when it is about relationships, not when it's like a restaurant. So what does it look like to intentionally love the church? What do you mean, love the church intentionally? To be in community with one another as God intended it to be. I understand, but not quite. What are you talking about? Let's look at what the rest of this series is going to be about as we uh, wrap up here this morning. Let me give you an overview of what we're going to be looking at here, okay? First of all, love. What is love? How do you love the church? You love by, first of all, connecting, okay? Being in community, in fellowship, in a relationship with each other. It's more than knowing people's names and where they sit on a Sunday morning. We love one another when we stand alongside one another. We belong to one another. We're connected not only with the believers in this room, but to all believers in this community, in this state, throughout this country, and around the world. Every Sunday, as we gather together, I think of believers around the world who are together right now, worshiping, worshiping as we are. Here is a vital biblical truth for you to grab hold of. You are not alone. There may be times when you think you are, but God has made provision for you. You are part of the temple of Christ. You are a member of his body. You are connected to his people. This increases your effectiveness. It gives you more strength and it increases your worth and your self-esteem. You are not alone. You are being brought together, connected with one another. And you know what that means? Being connected means no one, no one ever stands alone. We also love the church by serving. That's going to be another week. God has given each of his followers supernaturally empowered abilities to encourage and help one another in the community. Did you know that you have superpowers? Huh? We're going to talk about that in one of our weeks. And then we're going to talk about love by giving. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about giving. But probably not the way that you'd expect. In fact, we won't talk at all about tithing or percentages. We won't even try any ill-planned guilt trips on you to get you to give more. We are simply going to talk about giving as an indicator of love. And then we're going to talk about love by sharing. The love that Jesus gives to us and that we can have for one another isn't something for us to be hoarding and protecting with inside the walls of this church. The love that we are to have for one another is also meant to show this community what the love of Jesus looks like. If we aren't sharing the love of God with our words and deeds, then we are not truly loving. We're going to talk about that as well. That's what the series is going to be about. 
loving my church, how to do it, and how we can do it. My spiritual life went into overdrive when I joined the local church. I was in my early 20s, a lot was going on, and I had fallen out of the habit, innocently enough, of attending church regularly. I didn't realize what I had missed until I got back into the groove of attending the same church week after week, hearing the same pastor teach week after week, and it made a big difference. So did worshiping alongside those same people that I came to know and love and share with. And it wasn't long before I realized, you know what? I love this church. I love these people. This is my home where I want to live out my faith. Worshiping with people, week in, week out, not only strengthened my relationship with them, it strengthened my relationship with God. And as a result, I became more consistent in my daily walk and eventually answered the call when Jesus said, follow me. The bottom line is that Going to church has made me a better Christian. That shouldn't be shocking news to you. That is the way God intended it to be. Through our relationship, and though our relationship with Jesus is a personal one, one-on-one -on -one relationship, he never intended for it to be an exclusive relationship. God designed us to love not only him, but also one another. In fact, this is what Jesus said in John 13, 35. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The mark of a disciple. I invite you to stick around with us for the next four weeks as we look at different ways that we can intentionally love the church and see what it is that God intended for this community of faith. If you are with us today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I invite you to stick around as well. Some of you have had negative experience with the church in the past, and I want to tell you for that I am very sorry. But I want you to know that that is not what God intended. But what did he intend? That's what you'll find out. Why not join us for a few weeks to learn about this, what the church is supposed to be like, and help us to try to become more like that. There are two things I want to challenge you to do as we leave. First of all, I want you to let people know that you love your church. We have t-shirts that are available on the back table for $7, okay? Um, and they look like this. They're pretty nice t-shirts, I think. Just imagine wearing these shirts as an easy conversation tool, right? Starting a conversation. Think about it like this. When we see somebody with a concert or sports shirt on and it becomes an instant opportunity for a conversation, doesn't it? You see somebody out and about with that, that, that group that you like on it or the band that you like and you ask them where the show is at and how they know and how they like the music. Strangers, complete strangers that you normally wouldn't talk to, you'll strike up a conversation with because they are wearing a jersey of your favorite team. Just think of some of the conversations that could come out of you wearing this shirt. Think about it. Simple act of wearing a shirt. Don't think about it. Pray about it. Pray for God to give you opportunities to talk to people when they see you with this shirt on. And that people would ask you about it. Ask you about your church. Wonder why you love your church. I really can't wait to hear about when those conversations happen. Please do it. Please let me know if you want to get serious about this church, about your faith walk. This is the time. The time is now. Get connected and I love my church group. That's the other opportunity. Our small group. We're, we're going to meet on Wednesday nights at 7 and talk about these Sundays afterward and discuss the topics a week afterward um, that will be covered. And I want to encourage and challenge you 
to get in one of our small groups. If you don't know how, see Irma Flora or Michelle Reinhardt. They'll get you connected. You can start a group. And when your small groups meet, you're going to do Bible study. But I want you to take some time to talk at the beginning, not about what the problems are with the church, but about what the solutions are for the church. Because the solutions are in your hands. And I want you to say, how can we do something to love our church? That's the opportunity that you have right now. This is <clears> going to be an exciting journey. I hope that you will stick with us. I'm excited that we are able to go through this journey together. And I am just so looking forward to what God is going to do with us and in spite of us. So I praise God for this opportunity. Make sure to see Jennifer sign up for next week. Get your t-shirt. Let's get together and do this. Let's pray together this morning. Father God, I just thank you for your living word that can live among us and in us. Help us to actually be your church, Lord. We love it. We want to love it to life. Help us to reach out, to live, and actually experience all that you are going to do through us. We thank you and praise you and ask your blessing. Amen.